Chile, South America. February 27th, 2010, three in the morning. This quake reaches an incredible magnitude 8.8 the fifth largest ever recorded. Daybreak reveals the scale of the damage. Half a million homes damaged or destroyed, and hundreds dead. The quake is so violent, it accelerates the Earth's rotation, knocking a millionth of a second off the length of the day. It's nearly 500 times larger than the Haitian tremor. So why is this quake so powerful? Soon after the disaster, geologist Mike Beavis arrives in Chile to find answers. This place repeatedly has huge earthquakes. Right now, the number one and the number five earthquakes of recorded you know, history are right here. So that makes this the world champion place for big earthquakes. All of Chile's strong quakes originate off its Pacific coast. So that's where Beavis is looking for evidence. The island of Santa Maria sits just 60 miles east of the boundary of the South American plate and the Nazca plate. This fault under the Pacific Ocean triggers the enormous quake. This beach is one of the closest points to the offshore epicenter. At the base of the cliffs, Beavis notices a white streak, a clue to the quake's sheer power. All right, so here we are looking at this big rock. It's in situ. It's got all of this white concretion, which is something that forms under the sea. It's got seaweed, and there are actually limpets and mussels and things attached to the rock. I can see some right up there, right, more than four feet above my head. What this is telling you is that the whole uh, coastline jumped up uh, two to three meters. There's two minutes of ground shaking like crazy, and during that two minutes, this whole coastline lifted up and all these marine creatures are now stranded in the air. The eight feet of uplift happened because the plates here are not grinding past one another side by side, like the faults under Haiti and California. They are subducting, one pushing beneath the other. When the fault ruptures, the overriding plate punches upward, creating an extremely powerful quake. When you're getting subduction, the overriding plate is actually being caught on the, the, the plate that's being pushed down. And that, over time, accumulates a massive amount of energy. The enormous areas of plate that shift and the huge uplift produced give these epic quakes their name, megathrusts. And they have a chilling side effect. Tsunamis. The uplift raises the sea above, creating a wave. It travels across the ocean at over 500 miles per hour, wreaking havoc. In 2004, a 9.3 megathrust, 150 miles offshore, leads to the infamous Indian Ocean Tsunami that kills almost a quarter of a million people. In 2010, the Chile quake generates its own tsunami, engulfing coastal villages like Dichato. The wave destroys over 90% of the town. Mike Beavis and geophysicist Frederick Bloom survey the aftermath. Oh my goodness, there's a... It's like a child's sock hanging up 
20 feet above our heads. Yeah. Well, I think that sock is probably the high, high water mark. Wow, that's easily 30 feet above sea level. Easily 30 feet. Yeah. My goodness. Nobody stood a chance here. When the leading edge of a tsunami hits a shallow shoreline, it slows down. But as the faster water behind backs up, the wave swells. Here in Dechato, the wave reaches the upper floors of buildings. It looks like the water took out the drywall about halfway up the second floor. Yeah, about waist height. There's waist height damage everywhere. Look at this. Fish on the floor. My goodness. Lots of fish. You're next to the fish. No olvides. Don't forget. Today I will be thinking of you. Happy Valentine's Day. Wow. I hope these people know what to do when it happened. The wave's height explains its destructive power. A 30-foot wave exerts a pressure equivalent to the weight of a battle tank. As it flows in and out, it scours the earth, destroying foundations and undermining buildings. Well, when I was a surfer, they, they used to tell us that one cubic meter of water weighed about a ton, you know, so you've got a 30-foot wave. There's an awful lot of force. It's like a wall of water that comes in and never goes away. So the currents are just pushing and pushing and pushing for minutes in the same direction and just rip everything apart. It just doesn't stop coming. <laughs> 